I had in mind something to share with you guys when I was coming here, but then I had a conversation with someone at the bus station that kind of changed that, and I thought, oh, I want to share with you a little story. I was waiting for my bus to come here in Laredo in Spain, and this old man just walked to where I was and sat by my side on the same bench and said, buenas tardes, so good afternoon. And I thought, here we go. <laughs> <clears throat> this creepy old man that has no one to talk to, that has nothing to do and uh, has to bother me that I'm going to this cool Christian surfers gathering, fine. Uh, but then he sat down and he, the first thing he says is, life is a wonderful thing. And he smiled and he looked peaceful. And so, you know, lately <laughs> I have not been feeling really motivated, uh, just in general, just to be honest. In life, I just don't have the energy. I don't feel a lot of the passion uh, anymore. So I thought maybe I can learn something from this man and let him talk. Um, so he, he did start talking. And the first thing he said is, I have had a really good job. He was a pretty old man, and he said, I was lucky. I worked for 44 years for Bosch as an engineer, and that was a really good thing. And he talked about not only that opportunity he had had, but how he always wanted to do things the right way when he was working for Bosch. And being honest with people, specifically, and he was put in a position where he had to teach others then how to do the job, how he was doing it, and, and properly. So this man was, seemed to be a good man. Um, and I could see he was not bragging about himself when a bus driver came and shook his hand. And by that look in the eyes of the driver, I could see this is an honored man. This is not a creepy old man. This is an honored man who has had a full life, it seems. Um, then he went on and he said that life had given him a good wife. They met when they were 13. And he said that was a love for all of life and that he is happy about that, that life had given him a good wife. He was grateful. And then lastly, what struck me more is he said, now what I do is I look back and I think of all those things that I maybe could have done better and the things that I didn't do right. And this man that I thought was a creepy old man bragging about his life was actually full of life. And he was full of thankfulness. And not only that, but he was looking back to those things he maybe didn't do that right and thinking about it. So in a couple of days, he said, I'm turning 80. So that was, I think, a couple of days ago. He was going to turn 80. And he said it joyfully. So he didn't seem like what I thought he was, but he, se he seemed full of life. And we didn't have time to talk more, and we didn't get to talk about Jesus. Uh, and by the way, my evangelistic skills are like zero. And you can fire me after this, that's fine. But uh, <laughs> I, I just didn't know how to you know, connect it. We didn't have time. But I did tell him one thing. I told him, if you truly look back and recognize that you didn't do right and that you, would, you needed to do things a different way, I think God can look at you and forgive you because you're asking for forgiveness in life, it seems. And I don't know if this man, Paco is his name, I don't know if Paco was a Catholic culturally or an agnostic or he just did, doesn't care about the whole religion thing, but I have this suspicion, I've been thinking about this all this time, that I might see him in eternity. This man that has been faithful all his life to the things that God gave him, or as he says, life gave him, but he was faithful to a job, being honest in that job, faithful to one wife, to a family, faithful in that repentance and humility that he didn't always do things right. And aren't those, I thought, the values of the kingdom of God? But you know what inspires me even more is that Paco would be, imagine Paco is there in eternity and I meet him 
not only that he is there, but he would probably look at me <laughs> and tell me the same thing. Didn't I tell you that life is a wonderful thing? Because here I am lately worrying so much about being a good Christian, about being a good ministry leader, about just being a good person, about being enough, about doing enough, and always in this struggle. And it's just like tiring and frustrating. And I'm not having that same attitude that this Paco seems to have of gratefulness, of just thanking what God gave him and of being faithful in it, being relaxed and doing those things. And so I want to be like Paco. <laughs> and you know who teaches me to be like Paco? Jesus. The guy we didn't have time to talk about actually teaches me some things about that attitude. In Matthew 11, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord, of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. And you know, Paco is not a kid. He just turned 80, but he has the same amount of theology degrees than kids. And he has the same understanding maybe uh, of God as little kids, but he seems to be expressing those values that I seem to have lost. And that was really inspiring. He seems to be living a life that Jesus loves. And I want that. <laughs> um, here I am, wise and learned, <laughs> with all my theology degrees, with all my ministry, whoa, <laughs> with all my ministry roles, and we're all doing things like that. And we have responsibilities, and we're so serious about them, so wise and learned, but most of the times focusing on myself and not on God. And focusing in on what I'm not doing right, what I should do better, the things that should change, and not the things that I have. So you know what Paco actually inspires me um, also is to be faithful. Faithful with the things that God gives you. Um, Roy, at the beginning of this gathering, um, said you all are here for a reason. And God put you here, and he has a plan. And that is something God gives you. So what are we doing with that? And there is another quick um, text I would like to read from Scripture. Uh, in the same Gospel of Matthew, Jesus gives a parable. And you know, usually the New Testament, when it talks about faithfulness, it's not talking about us. It's talking about God, and that God is faithful. That's the main focus on all of the teaching of the New Testament. But there is this one parable where Jesus talks about faithfulness. And it's when he talks about the master and some servants, and the master giving some talent, something to those servants, so they invest it. So they do something useful with it. And to the, that servant, those servants who were faithful, the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And I just have this thought. I think Paco, sitting in that, ba that bus station, has been faithful all his life to the things God has given him. And it, he seems to be sharing already his master's happiness, that attitude. I hope to see him in eternity. And I think he has that attitude. So what, and that's the question turns then to me. What do I have that God has given me? Am I seeing it? Or am I just completely missing those things God has given me so that I would do something with it? Because I'm focused on myself or on other things, on our other ministries and other people that are better than me. But could I just recognize that God is faithful? And therefore, I can be faithful. So if 99% of the time we see God is the one who is faithful, can we just do that 1%? of being faithful in response. All those things that he is doing that we cannot even do, being where we are, in the place we were born, with our family, with our ministry, the people we've met, we, there's no chance we can do that on our own. But can we be faithful with it? Um, I'd like to just leave you with three sentences and then pray, if I have time. Thank you. So three things that I've been reflecting on these days, and I hope can be inspiring to just start this day. First, maybe I can learn something from this man. We're 
so pro at ministry. <laughs> but can we maybe learn something from the little children? from the people that don't seem to know anything about our business of ministry, but that seem to have those values of the kingdom because life, God, has been good to them and they've recognized that. Can we learn something from Paco? Second thing, life is a wonderful thing. I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> it is. So we should be thankful. We should. And the last is, we can be faithful because God has been faithful with who you are, what he's given you, the things he's done for you. So you just have to respond. Be faithful because God is truly faithful in what he gives you. So if you want to stretch out your hand and pray with me. Um, yeah, we just want to come before you, Father, because you are a good God, a good Father, who are truly faithful. And God, I want to be an 80-year-old man like Paco. I want to have that energy, that life to give. Not sucking on other people's life and depending on others all the time and being worried about myself all the time. We want to be joyful. We want to be thankful, grateful, with an attitude of repentance, of humility, because that is Jesus. And that's you in us, God. So would you do it with what we have? And we want to be humble and confess that we didn't always do right. We don't want to be so proud to think we have it all um, together. We don't. And we should have done better maybe. But we've, we ask for your forgiveness and you give it to us and you are faithful with us. So, yeah, God, I just pray that everyone here will continue to depend on your faithfulness and that we will be those servants who are investing what you've given us, that we will value it because you value it, because it has value. You've given us so many things. Would we see that? And would we be grateful? In your holy name we pray, Jesus. Amen.